everybody welcome back to my channel so this is a requested video um, one of you asked me if I could put together a beginner crafters kit so basically she wanted to know if she's just starting out in crafting what are some of the essential tools that she'll need and can she get them on a budget she didn't ask that but I'm gonna share that part with you <laughs> um so here we go I mean, this is just my version of what I think I use all the time. Um, I don't scrapbook much anymore. I don't do card making stuff much anymore. Um, just on special occasions. Um, what else do people do that I don't really do? I don't do planning. Uh, I don't have a planner book and planner supplies. This is just basic crafting stuff that I feel like I couldn't live without. Or would be difficult to live with that, okay? Okay, so the very first thing that every crafter needs, <laughs> not really, is a scissor. So um, this is, uh, I wanna say it's my 37th pair of scissors, but it's not really. These are uh, from Dora Sharp. I'm pretty sure I got them either at Staples or Walmart like I didn't get them at the Dollar Tree not that you can't get good scissors at the Dollar Tree I just know I haven't gotten these and I use these for everything obviously every cutting purpose I also use them as you know I use the inside um, joint here to cut my flowers um, paper uh, a nice long scissor is great for cutting straight lines um, if you are cutting something if you're cutting something and you do like this, you're less likely to get a straight line than if you start deep into the scissor and go with one swift move, okay? All right, um, so that goes in the kit. The next thing is also a cutting tool. It is a craft knife, utility knife. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. Um, usually you can get two of these for a dollar. The end of this one is missing. This way you snap the blades off. Um, so I just do it with my pliers. But um, a craft knife, a utility knife, either one of those. You could use an X-Acto knife even. So that goes in there. Um, now that we've discussed things, how you take things apart, we'll discuss how to put them back together. So essential in the modern day crafters craft kit is a glue gun. This one is a high temp from Ad Tech. It was it was rather inexpensive compared to some of the prices. It was a Midland. It was like six ninety seven, I think, at Walmart. Um, you can get low temp, high temp, or multi temp. Um, the glue sticks, mostly the glue sticks nowadays are multi tap glue sticks, but you have to read the package. Um, somebody had actually asked me once what happens if I use the wrong glue sticks. Well, you'll just get different undesirable me melting methods. Like if you use high temp glue sticks and a low temp gun, they might not melt as easy at all or at all. But if you use low temp glue sticks and a high temp gun, it'll just sometimes it'll just pour out. So it's really just um, a matter of paying attention to what you have. It's not a matter of like making sure that that's the right glue, you know. Um, so of course with the glue stick, uh, glue, glue, glue gun comes glue sticks. So you guys know that, or hopefully you know, that these are some of my favorite um, glue sticks. This is Gorilla Glue, started coming out with Gorilla Glue sticks. They are fantastic. I don't use them for every project, I just use them in place of um, where I'm, I might use E6000 um, or something like that. Um, but for everyday use I just used... I use regular glue sticks. I keep them in my glue stick holder, my my glue stick holder. And um, so that goes in the kit. Along the lines of glue, and this is not a sponsored vlog, it just sounds like it, <laughs> is white glue. This is white craft glue. This is a Lean's Tacky. Um, I have mentioned it before. I use it a lot. Um, 
it is like Elmer's glue. It's the same uh, formula, I think, as Elmer's glue. It's just very thick. So it doesn't take as long to dry. And you won't, because it's got less water, or you won't get that wrinkly effect in your paper as much. Of course, if you use too much of it, that'll happen. But for the most part, you won't get that wrinkly effect in, in your paper products. It's also relatively inexpensive. You can get the little bottle, the little three ounce bottle you can buy at the Dollar Tree. But that's my Aleens Tacky. Also from Aleens, and it doesn't have to be from Aleens, but what I, this one is from Aleens, um, spray glue. Spray glue is, in my opinion, essential. Um, I know you guys on my channel don't see me use it as much as I use it for other projects around the house, but anytime I'm going to recover, reupholster something, um, I hit it with some spray glue uh, when I'm recovering boxes, which I still have a lot of projects. I I still have a lot of projects for you guys, so they're coming, but whenever I recover a box with fabric, um, you saw me do the lampshades, any of those things we use spray glue on, um, you wanna go ahead and get yourself some spray glue. This is just from Aline's Tacky Spray Glue. It was the best price for spray glue at my Walmart. And like I don't have a craft store. So if you, I used to use 3M because um, it was available to me. So if you have the 3M available to you, that's really great. There's many techniques, dry mounting and um, tacking and all that stuff. So um, it's definitely one that has to go in the arsenal as far as I'm concerned. This one's gonna sound like simple, but hey, not everything's a million dollar idea. <laughs> Pencils. You know, that sounds dumb. I know it sounds simple, it sounds dumb, but <laughs> you don't realize, uh, especially with the computers and the computer work these days, we don't have, not everybody has a variety of pencils in their storage. like. Um, I feel like I went to someone's house and I was like, do you have a pencil? And they were like, no, we only use pens or the computer. So um, this, these are uh, Bic, the, um, my goodness, retractable lead pens, mechanical pencils. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. And then this is just a, you know, Dixon Ticonderoga type deal. Um, number two pencil. Um, but pencils are essential for crafting. Anytime you want to mark up something, draw something, um, you don't realize how much you actually use them. And then, um, you make sure you have like a variety and a few, because if the tip breaks, you don't want to get up in the middle of a project to have to go sharpen your pencil, which is why I like these because if the tip breaks, I just push more tip down. Okay. And of course, Everybody needs a Sharpie. Um, these are great. I mean, I, I wish I could sit here and do an entire video on the thousand ways to use a Sharpie marker. But anytime you're marking anything that you need to see darkly. <laughs> we use them to write lettering on um, projects because it's permanent. Um, it You know, Sharpie can come off, with, uh, off of some surfaces with like rubbing alcohol, but for the most part, it is permanent. Um, so if you're, we did um, the Easter eggs at um, the Ray Dunn Easter eggs. There are projects where you can take the Sharpie paint pens and you can put them on ceramics and bake them in the oven. All of these, I mean, it's just an essential tool. Now, this looks like the biggest Sharpie that they have. This is like the most common one, but it actually does say fine point. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that because it is a tapered point. I know the point does wear down on a Sharpie from time to time, the more you use it. But they actually have an extra fine one that I like to use when I'm doing my card making. Um, but I'm not gonna show that into it. It's not essential for everyday crafting, okay? So a Sharpie needs to go into the box. The next, the next things along with, you know, uh, creating is um, paint and foam brushes. I think foam brushes are essential for not just paint, also when you're doing de decoupage, when you're doing anything with Mod Podge, um, any of those applications, you want to use a foam brush. Um, you don't have to. Again, you can use bristles, but 
there is a chance, especially with Mod Podge, that you leave bristles behind. And when you, if you're doing something that's, uh, you know, like a thin fabric or tissue paper, you really don't want to have the, the bristles stuck under there. But I do love a foam brush for nice, even coverage um, of paint and, um, and Mod Podge. So that's going in the kit. Since we were just speaking of Mod Podge, I'll go ahead and show you. Um, this Mod Podge I got, it was at the Target dollar spot for a dollar, but they do sell this size at the Dollar Tree from time to time. And this is a bigger size. This one is eight ounces. And Mod Podge, as you know, there's a, well, maybe you don't know. Maybe start over. <laughs> Mod Podge comes in different finishes. So the yellow label is the matte finish, which is like, um, doesn't give any shine or sheen. Um, and this one, this orange bottle, is the satin finish, which does give a tiny bit of a sheen to your project when you're done. Okay, so that definitely needs to go in the arsenal. Now, for a little bit more of the serious crafter, or if you're making something that's more permanent in nature, then you want to invest in some E6000. This is the last tube of E6000 I have. It, came, it comes in a multi-pack like this. Um, you get four little tubes, which I found to be more beneficial to me because I don't use it that often. Um, when I had a big tube, it got dried out before I, like I used it for a project and then it got way dried out before I could use it again. So I found this to be much better. I've had these four tubes, which is now at its very end since 2013 so it's about almost five years that I've had these tubes and it's better for me to um, just use these ones at the time so I don't necessarily think that that's essential for a crafter a beginning crafter but I feel like on YouTube a lot of the crafts the Dollar Tree crafts and those things they do turn to E6000 quite a bit so that might be something to put in your arsenal as well I'm just going to put one bottle in there just to show you, but you definitely want to invest in some craft paints. Um, if you um, know anything about Apple Barrel products, Apple Barrel um, is by Plaid, I believe. Yeah. Apple Barrel or Plaid paints, they make very inexpensive craft paints. You can find them at all major craft stores, including Walmart. And then in some Dollar Trees, I actually found out that you can get this paint. However, <clears throat> excuse me, this bottle is only 50 cents at Walmart. So if you spend a dollar at the Dollar Tree, I know it's about convenience as well. Um, if you spend a dollar at the Dollar Tree, then of course, then you might be not wait, not investing your money properly. But um, I think that it's essential in a craft kit. Um, there are two major colors that you want to have black and white um, I'm not just saying that because I'm partial to black and white <laughs> but black is not only used for black or you know making stuff but it's great for antiquing um, you get black in the crevices and then you wash away the high surfaces and it looks antiqued and then of course white or off-white this is actually antique white it is great for whitewashing um, to make stuff faded and appear um, lesser than. However, and both can be mixed to make a variety of grays. So if I could tell you to just start with five tubes of paint, which 50 cents each would be $2.50 investment, I would tell you to get a white, a black, a red, a blue, and a yellow. Because red, blue, and yellow, as you know, are the primary colors and every other color can be made from them, except white and black. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Um, so that would be my five colors for you to pick. But I'm going to put paint in the kit. And the last thing that's the most important <laughs> is a ruler or a tape measure. But really a ruler. I like um, this ruler especially because it's metal and it's really safe to cut against without um, fearing that you're going to cut your ruler. I have cut against many plastic rulers and cut big divots out of the plastic rulers. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, this actually is 
probably a fancy expensive ruler that I got from my sister-in-law who used to do um, work at a newspaper. <laughs> but um, I love it. It's 18 inches, which I find very useful. This many times we want to measure something that's past 12 inches. Um, but you don't have to. The Dollar Tree has a variety of rulers you could choose from if you're starting out. Um, like, but like I said, I prefer the metal. They actually even have like a, a square that's metal in the hardware section. Um, it looks like an L if you look like a black metal L. And that's a metal ruler. It's got rulers, ruler measurements on it. So um, that is the last piece that's going in the kit. So what I've decided to do is put this all in. Let me just stand you up a little bit. I've got this little, um, it's really like for picnics or paper plates and plastic cups and napkins and stuff. But um, you could put everything in here that you need. Um, and there's plenty of room for more, um, you know, depending on. Uh, so I could put the tacky glue, I could put the Mod Podge here with the glue. And then I'll have all these, you'll have all these rooms for your paints. Um, paintbrush, scissors, all that stuff, okay? And this isn't necessary, but I just wanted to show you, you can get everything that you need to get started right there in that little kit, okay? So I really do, oh, and don't forget, if you're over 40, get reading glasses. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's got nothing to do with age. It really, it really does just, I actually started using them way before I was 40 because, um, when I was doing fine bead work, I you know you basically they're like magnifying glasses. So, um, but that's it. Um, I hopefully this helps. I appreciate you asking. Um, I'm sure that there's a ton of stuff that people think is essential. This is just what I find essential. There is duct tape, double sided tape, any of those things. If you do paper crafts, you know that could be what's important. Um, of course, my personal, I never go anywhere of my 97 cent spray paint from the Dollar Tree, especially when you have the, the, the kind of look that I'm going for in my house. I use that for quite a lot of stuff, like that cabinet right there. I spray painted that black from, the Dollar, from, from Walmart. Um, oh, goodness, magnet strip and double sticky tape and Velcro strips and Velcro dots and glue dots. I mean, all of these things are there to make your life easier as a crafter, but you can get away without them. You know, um, if you're paper crafting, you definitely want glue sticks like the kind that look like chapstick, you know, those ones. <laughs> and then of course, you know, uh, as a crafter, Dollar Tree Crafter. There is a lot of little essential, well, they're not essential. There's a lot of little things that I like to have in my arsenal, like um, like the mini paper, the mini clothespins. When I've used my last five mini clothespins, I go and restock those. They're not essential, but I like to keep them on hand, if that makes any sense. Um, burlap ribbon. Once again, because I really like that farmhouse feel, when I'm out of burlap ribbon, I go and I replenish my supply. So things like that. Jute cord, if you're doing farmhouse crafting. Um, another thing that you want to keep on hand at all time because you never know when the inspiration will hit you to go ahead and craft something. Okay, but I think that covers everything. That's real. Oh, and of course, flowers. Because if you're into whatever kind of crafting you're into, there's always room for flowers. That's just my opinion. <laughs> but isn't that what this is about? If you want someone else's opinion, you go to their channel, right? Okay. Well, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Of course, I would love to hear you guys share what you think is essential if I had missed it um, in your crafting supplies. And if you would care to share this video with friends and family, anybody you know who might be interested in starting crafting, and what they should get in case um, in case it's something they're interested. It also makes a great gift. So if you have anybody who is recently retired 
or has just become a new mom um, and is going to be spending more time at home. Um, anybody who just got married and may be becoming a housewife, <clears throat> it'd be a really nice gift to start um, them off with. Um, and I also could show you, if you're interested, some essential tools for... Well, I don't know that everybody does woodworks and crafts and that kind of stuff. But if you want to see something like that, just let me know. Um, anyway, so share me with anybody you know might be interested in seeing how to start off a crafting kit. Okay? And as always... Oh! Before I say that... <laughs> if you haven't yet joined the family, when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.